What is up, I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Steam Controller. Now I already did an unboxing and first impressions video, so if you want like an in-depth uh, tour around the controller, go check that out and come back for the review. But let's get into it. So this thing hasn't been out for all that long, even though it's been developed over like the past three or four years, I want to say, and it's already sparked quite a bit of controversy. The only thing that's for certain is that Steam wants you to be playing more PC games in your living room and using their software and now hardware to do it. So taking a look at what you get when you pick this up, you of course get the Steam controller. Included in the package are two AA batteries, a USB wireless pairing dongle, a micro USB cable, and a dongle extender. The dongle extender is pretty nice if you are in a set up, which doesn't allow your computer to be within the uh, wireless range of the controller which is actually pretty good now looking at the price this only costs fifty dollars in comparison to some other controllers which usually come in around the sixty dollar mark so that's very aggressively priced you can pick up this and the steam link together for around a hundred dollars or you can pick up a competitively priced steam machine running steam os from a number of different vendors like origin pc so one place that fifty dollar price tag does kind of show is in the build quality it's pretty solid made of a a combo of matte and glossy plastic it feels almost overly light and it doesn't really inspire any thoughts of it being a truly premium product so in terms of layouts and the ergonomics this is pretty close to the size of a typical gamepad like a 360 or Xbox one or ps4 controller the grips have this kind of unusual and somewhat unique weird curve and shape to them while other controllers generally have them slim and arc down the steam controllers grips get fatter and kind of arc up slightly this feels a bit strange at first First, but it does a decent job of giving you enough room to hold on to it with your pinky fingers. This becomes particularly important since all of your other fingers can technically be used simultaneously on all the different inputs and buttons, which we'll talk about now. So really the biggest thing that this thing has going on over other game pads are these two touch pads that you can see right here. The whole controller really just seems to be designed primarily around these. This is notable in the way the top of the controller slopes up and outwards towards your thumbs. And they're placed pretty well so you can easily reach them with both your thumbs. I've heard of other people saying they have problems with some kind of thumb fatigue after using this for an extended period of time. I didn't run into that, so your mileage may vary. It's a little weird, a little strange, but nothing that most people shouldn't be able to get over. So now for the big question, how does it game? And this is kind of where a lot of the controversy lies in this controller, and it's mainly dealing with these touchpads. Do these offer enhanced capabilities over a standard gamepad? Can you take on mouse and keyboard players with it in hardcore first-person shooters? And the answer is kind of yes and no. Sorry, I have to cop out on that a little bit. I've seen a lot of people condemning this as a casual peripheral, mainly good for having fun playing a campaign, and it is pretty good for that. Others say it's leaps and bounds better than a standard game pad. I think it's gonna vary greatly depending on what type of games you play. Obviously, if you're playing first person shooters versus, you know, an RTS, it's gonna play completely different for that. I think for the most part, if you're expecting to be able to use this controller to go head to head with, you know, the highest level of competitive gamers and a first person shooter, it's not gonna happen. I used a controller for about a dozen games each of Battlefield 4, Dirty Bomb, and CSGO. I was able to get a decent amount of kills and occasionally lead the server or lobby uh, using this against mouse and keyboard players, but I definitely had to change the style in which I play. So finally, no, this is absolutely not nearly as good as a mouse and keyboard. I think if you put in a lot of practice, you can get pretty good with it, but it's never gonna get you to that level. So in terms of how good it is against a standard gamepad, I'm really used to kind of standard gamepads like an Xbox One or a Xbox 360 and PS4 controller. So I felt a lot more comfortable and tended to do better with those as well. Now adding to the complexity of this is the fact that you can use this right touchpad in a number of different ways depending on how you have it set up in the customizations. You can use it as a straight one-to-one -one mouse, a joystick and or a trackball, and you can add acceleration to those if you want to. Your experience will actually drastically change with these different controls, making you feel like you're kind of relearning every single time you switch it up. With the trackball, you can kind of toss your cursor around, so when you pick up your thumb, you can still be moving around, which helps with turning more than 100 
180 degrees. You can set up a button which helps you whip around 180 degrees, but I don't really like wasting a button on that. I'd rather just be able to do it with standard controls. By far the most frustrating thing I experienced is having to pick up my finger when you reach the edge of the control and pick up just like you have to do with your mouse pad. The thing is, what you can get a gigantic mouse pad if your sensitivity is such that you need to do that, but you can't really expand the um, you know the length of this. You can increase your sensitivity. Uh, it's, it just wasn't a great experience. A couple times it happened when I was like right in the heat of a you know big gunfight and you have to pick up your thumb and move it back to the center and you just die because you're not able to control your aim during that period. Also, I really recommend you not putting anything on this right click in, which can drastically kind of interrupt a gunfight if you're playing FPS's. I had melee on here for a little while, kind of mimicking what you standardly see in a lot of games like Call of Duty. And I found that kind of during some intense moments, I'd accidentally click it. And you know, when you melee in the middle of a gunfight and every bullet counts, you're probably gonna die multiple times. And I did, and it was frustrating. Really, the left pad seems like a bit of an afterthought. I tended to map things like the number keys, you know, which helps you switch between different weapons. Um, and that worked out fairly well, but really that's not really any different than what you'd do with a standard uh, game pad or controller. I also tended to bind switch to primary and or toggle primary secondary to the click in on this so that I could easily get back to those primary weapons whenever I need it. This does feature some motion controls. It's got an accelerometer and gyroscope, I believe. And I tried using the motion controls to enhance my aiming. As many people have said, they thought it was an intuitive and really uh, beneficial addition. I honestly didn't like it all that much. It feels pretty accurate, much more so than when you're playing with like a Wii controller. It's pretty much one to one. And in theory, it makes sense. You can use it to make more precise movements, but I noticed I had to deliberately concentrate a whole lot more on maintaining um, kind of a standard grip and not changing anything up. If I adjusted my grip or did anything like that, it could completely throw off my aim. Also tried the motion controls for things like a driving game, and yeah, it can add a little bit of immersion to that, but overall, I didn't really enjoy it either. I think if I wanted to kind of do this type of motion while I was playing a driving game, I'd just pick up a whole steering wheel setup. All in all, for me, the motion controls aren't really that big of a feature. I just found myself not wanting to use them for anything. Kind of reminds me of the six axis controller that PlayStation came out with around the time of the PlayStation 3. Seemed cool. You know, you hope developers would do stuff with it, but they ended up not doing it and it just kind of faded away. While driving, one thing I did notice I really didn't like was the short travel of the trigger. It made it really hard to feather the gas and brake. And I often find myself just going from zero to a hundred on that. So a little disappointed for driving games. All right, now for the dual stage triggers, it's a very cool feature, very cool concept. But again, I found myself not using it all that much. One example they gave was using the kind of analog portion of it to aim down the sights and then using the final click to actually squeeze the trigger. And then you can kind of set up thresholds so that if you just quickly tap it, it won't do the ADS part. I tried playing around with that and changing the threshold around and I just did not find a setting that I liked and just felt natural to me. So I ended up not using it all that much. The coolest thing about it I'd say is that it just gives you, you know, two extra inputs. And if you're able to find a use for them, that's great. Again, for me, maybe I'm too much of a traditionalist. I just did not find myself enjoying using it. So another interesting and kind of, I don't know if I want to say controversial, but um, annoying part for me at least are the placement of the ABXY buttons. I've become so ingrained with their normal placement and basically having this thumbstick or touchpad and ABXY button swapped. That's the standard for PlayStation and Xbox that I constantly found myself reaching for X and A and hitting the Y and B button and not getting the appropriate response that I expected. The back pedals I found to be an absolutely great addition to a controller. Uh, an obvious use here is in driving games, you can use one to shift up and one to shift down, giving a little bit more immersion. In terms of shooters, I most commonly found myself binding sprints and jump or jump and a special ability uh, in order to make sure I don't have to take my thumbs off of the movements and look around controls, which is really what you know paddles shine for the most. Um, one critique I'd have to say is I wish that they had two different sets on here as we've seen on other controllers like uh, a scuff controller or the new Xbox One Elite controller. Uh, the thumbstick is exactly what you can expect out of a standard thumbstick. Again, I don't like the fact that it's domed, 
but um, it didn't exhibit any type of uh, drift or movement. For the most part, you're gonna be putting things like um, WASD or just generic movement on there and it performed pretty well for that. So Steam, Steam Big Picture Mode and Steam OS are the only place where you're gonna be able to set the custom uh, profiles and mappings for this. So you'll need to have that downloaded obviously. And really the controller didn't offer very much extra kind of user experience in terms of navigation in there. It's already pretty well um, tuned for being able to use the gamepad. I found myself just using this left uh, thumbstick to navigate and the, right, uh, the left and right bumpers for the most part. Where this does shine is in the custom on-screen keyboard that they designed for this. It's really kind of weird and wonky at first, but after you get used to it, it's almost like you're using a physical QWERTY keyboard or two-hand typing. Uh, very interesting and leaps and bounds better than kind of the standard on-screen keyboard experience. In the past, the customization that the Steam controller has will probably put it leaps and bounds past uh, other standard game pads, but now we have controllers coming out like the Xbox One Elite controller, which can be used with the PC, offering pretty much a lot of the same features like full customization of the uh, button mappings, different thresholds, and, and changing a lot of stuff like that. It also has the added benefits of being modular. So it'll be very interesting to see how this new kid on the block coming through with a very drastically different um, kind of form factor and a very aggressive price at $50 stands up to the Xbox Elite with its $150 price tag and pedigree of having you know multiple iterations before it and kind of culminating in that new controller. So if you guys want to see maybe a showdown kind of type of video between this, maybe the uh, Nvidia Shield controller, standard Xbox controller and Xbox Elite, let me know in the descriptions and be sure to give the video a thumbs up. So yeah, I'm gonna say that if you have a standard gamepad that you're pretty happy with already, this is by no means a must buy. It's an interesting kind of, I don't wanna say trivial, but um, different take on something that we're all used to. So if you like trying new things out, by all means, go pick it up. Hopefully they'll have it in some stores like uh, GameStop and maybe some other places, uh, boutique type places that you can go and try it out. I always recommend you try something out before spending you know, kind of your hard earned money on it. I like to buy products as soon as they come out so I can test them and let you guys know what I think. I think the place where this shines the most will be for HTPCs. I've got one in the living room and that's honestly where I plan on using this for the very most part. So I hope this review helps you guys make a more informed buying decision. Be sure to subscribe if you already haven't shared the video. It helps a lot if you know somebody who's thinking about picking this up and aren't really sure whether it's going to suit their needs. Uh, let them know about this video. You got my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. I've got a UK and I will be putting a Canadian link down there too. So you guys can support the channel that way. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out.